we make sure that policymakers um, are informed when it comes to things like brain development. So many people understand that babies are born learning. And believe it or not, that may seem pretty basic to those of us in the field, but that has been a huge shift. Mm -hmm. uh, and so making sure that we, we make that connection between the brain science and then the policies that will support um, the healthy development of, of babies' brains. Hi, I'm Ron Spromberg, co-founder and CEO of Hi Mama. Welcome to our podcast about all things early childhood education. Myra, welcome to the Preschool Podcast. Thank you for having me. All right, so let's start off just learning a little bit more about zero to three for those who don't know what zero to three is all about and your work as chief policy officer at zero to three. Well, we are celebrating our 40th anniversary this year, uh, and our mission has always been to ensure that all babies have a strong start in life. Uh, and we do this by supporting three key groups, parents, professionals, and policymakers. For parents, we provide practical resources that help them connect more positively, deeply, and continuously with their babies. It's pretty important, right? Uh, and for, for professionals, like those on the on listening, um, we provide them with knowledge and tools that help them support healthy early development. And then for policymakers, which is the area I focus on, we make sure they have the information they need to advance comprehensive and coherent policies that support and strengthen families, caregivers, and infant toddler professionals. Uh, and then as Chief Policy Officer, I, I oversee the work of Zero Three's Policy Center, which is a nonpartisan research-based resource for federal and state policymakers and advocates, uh, it's a key part of it, on the unique developmental needs of infants, toddlers, and their families. So, I mean, so basically, we know, um, we use what we know from research and practice to inform the development and implementation of public policies that support our nation's youngest children here in the United States. Cool. Okay. So tell us a little bit more about that. What does that mean uh, in terms of, you know, working with policymakers to ensure that early childhood education is getting the representation that it needs to get? How does that work? Right. And so for us, we really focus on infants and toddlers. So, you know, policymakers have so much coming at them. Just think about the needs of families, uh, the needs of workers, but if we don't really focus on what infants and toddlers need and the supports that families need, we are missing a huge part of our our nation's um, strength, you know, moving forward. If we're not investing in babies, it's it's a pretty bad place to start without uh, kind of ignoring that that core part of of our nation here. And so, we make sure that policymakers um, are informed when it comes to things like brain development. So many people. Uh, now, as a result of Zero Three's work and so many amazing researchers out there, understand that babies are born learning. And believe it or not, and that may seem pretty basic to those of us in the field, but that has been a huge shift. Mm -hmm. uh, and so making sure that we, we make that connection between the brain science and then the policies that will support um, the healthy development of, of babies' brains. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a very good point because, like you said, for, for those of us who are involved in early learning you know, every single day, these are very obvious things, but in fact, they're, they're quite new in terms of understanding at large. Now, we, kn we know the research, the science behind brain development at the infant and toddler age group. How does that translate into investments or actions by the federal government? Like what type of investments would you like to see the, the federal government making in this area? Well, there are a number of policies uh, that we believe are, are pretty critical to the healthy development of young children. Um, they are high quality childcare for young children, um, paid family leave, um, healthy environments, so making sure that children have access to health care, making sure that uh, young children have access and, and families have access to infant and early childhood mental health. So those are kind of our, our big buckets and making sure that there, there are investments there. When it comes to child care, for example, we know that the majority of mothers with infants in this, and again in, in the United States, and so 62 percent of mothers return to the workforce within the first year after their child's birth. And more than half of children under the age of three, so we're talking more than six million children, spend some or all of their day being cared for by someone other than their parents. 
So there's really no question when it comes to childcare that this is, there's a significant need for a robust childcare system for babies in this country. Um, that's just that's just one one thing that we focus on. And sadly, we know um, from available research that 75% of toddlers in center care and 93% in home-based care settings are in settings of low or mediocre quality. And we know from research again that you know this is it's. This is detrimental to their development. We are actually hindering the healthy development of young children by by avoiding this this critical issue. So that's what? that's one. Yeah, that's a shocking number. I didn't know that uh, the ninety three percent figure that you quoted. Yeah, it's it's pretty shocking. I mean, you know, just to continue in terms of shockers here, in in thirty three states uh, and Washington D.C., we know that infant child care costs more, uh, you know, infant care uh, costs more than college tuition at a state university. And we know that, you know, when baby, when families are just starting out, they are at the early end of their career trajectory. They're not not making as much money as they might make later in life. And yet this is also the most expensive or one of the most expensive times uh, for families in terms of their budgets. So without childcare assistance for low-income families or even moderate uh, income families, we are already uh, you know, kind of tying families, you know, like tying one hand behind their back when it comes to giving them the development and the support that they need for their young children. Uh, we know that fewer than one out of every six children who are eligible for child care assistance actually receive it. And that number, sadly, is declining. So that's another mm-hmm. area where we really want to see um, investment in, in the child care development fund, for example, that big federal um, funding stream for child care. Interesting. Now, so we certainly want to see action uh, from the federal government to resolve some of these challenges we're facing. Uh, Also, uh, personally, and through the preschool podcast, we want to advocate for early childhood educators themselves to advocate for uh, child care and high quality child care and early learning programs. From your perspective uh, at zero to three, how can we as educators, directors, administrators within early childhood education get involved in policy work? And should we? And, and how does that work, do you think? You absolutely should. I am so glad that, that we're on this call because we need, we need everybody. We, and we especially need the experts in the field who know this work, who work with families day in and day out and know the challenges that they face. Uh, as you know, families that face the, the challenges that families face, but also the families and um, who don't even have access to this child care and the, you know, the children who are on the wait list, the providers are all too aware of these challenges. And we know that babies can't speak for themselves, right? And they certainly can't vote. So right. it is up to us, to those of us who work with them to speak up on their behalf. And especially at the federal level, you know, policymakers work on it so many issues across the board, and they and their staff can't be expert in everything. But we in the early childhood field, this group of professionals like like your listeners, we can be those experts for them. Uh, And, you you know, you often hear in advocacy work that if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. That's (laughs) certainly the case uh, when it comes to, um, you know, to babies, uh, unfortunately. And so policymakers at all levels of government are making decisions that impact the families that your listeners work with day in and day out, whether or not they're in the room. And so by engaging advocacy as educators, directors, and administrators, they can, your listeners can serve as important contacts in their states or districts where these policymakers turn to when they're making decisions on issues that affect families with them. Totally. Really need this work, yeah. Um, and then, you know, we, we know that, that advocacy is a lot of work especially on top of already full plates that our early kin education providers and professionals have. So it's our job at zero to three to make it easier for, for our field and to do the heavy lifting. And one way that we do that is through our Think Babies campaign uh, in partnership with the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. We are very excited um, to provide easy ways to educate our policymakers about babies and what families need to survive. And we really rely on your listeners, um, folks in the field, to, to get the word out. Um, we had a big splash with our campaign last year, and we're about to make some important announcements in the next few weeks so people can stay tuned and learn more about uh, our campaign if I can put in a plug there, it's at uh, www.thinkbabies.org. 
Awesome. Yes. Plugs are welcomed. Um, Good. Um, So so, um, one of the things that I always wonder about with advocacy is like, let's say I'm an early childhood educator and I want to advocate for, for the field. What's the messaging? Because there's, you know, there's what you talked about, which is the research and science behind brain development. I think that's a key one, but there's also a lot of reports uh, and literature out there about the economic benefits of high quality childcare, for example. Um, wh- what sort of messaging would you would you s- advocate people um, use when stressing the importance of early childhood education? Right, it's there. You know, messaging is so critical, and a lot of people have been spending a lot of resources trying to make sure that we have the right terminology, the right messaging. Um, if I can make another plug, I will say that your listeners can actually join the conversation and be part of our policy network where we send out uh, things just like this. We have access to toolkits on messaging and all kinds of things that folks in the field can use to make sure that they're on point and that they're connected to the larger audience and the, the larger conversation and are using terms that researchers have shown actually work with uh, with policymakers. So mm. they can sign up at um, it's www.zero-to-three.org and then you can click on support our work and there you can, it's a free way for people uh, who care about infants and toddlers, who I, I know your listeners do, to use their knowledge and expertise to impact public policy for our youngest children and families. And so when you sign up, you receive information and action alerts about policies and events that matter to you, like childcare, like paid family leave, which is something we haven't touched on yet. But um, there are a lot of ways to, to think about that. But in terms of messaging, you know, I think it's it's also just using the common sense, the language that you know your family, you use with your families and that you know connects with them. So when you're talking about um, supporting a child's development. Think about the, the families that, that you talk to and say, I'm thinking about your listeners and, and the language that you use to get across the importance of this time with, with families. And then, and then you know, those, those stories carry a lot of weight with policymakers and just being that, that voice. And because you have that practical experience and that practical knowledge is so critical. I can't do that. You know, in my, my perch here in, Nash, in Washington, D.C., we, we need to hear from the field, from the people who, who do this uh, day in and day out. You're yeah. the expert. Yeah, and the, yeah. the personal stories, I think, are very impactful as well. And we've certainly heard some on this podcast of life-changing stories where people's lives would be completely different if they hadn't had some important intervention at the infant, infant and toddler stage. Um, you mentioned uh, something about your work with the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. And so I just want to circle back on that quickly because... Uh, they've done some research, and in a recent report, they've uh, mentioned social emotional development and its role in preparing children for success in school and life. And I know this is uh, a very important subject that's being uh, increasingly discussed uh, around social and emotional development, and I think that's uh, in particular very key in that zero to three age range. Um how can policies, do you think, support this? And, and how is your work with Robert Wood Johnson Foundation helping support social emotional development specifically, if that is something that um, you are focusing on? Oh, it absolutely is. At, at zero to three, all of our work stems from one thing, and that's all about relationships. During the first few years of life, you know, more than one million new neural connections form every second faster than at any later point in our development as you know, human beings. And these connections lay the groundwork for the rest of our lives. These connections are forged by loving and engaging early experiences and relationships with parents and caregivers. And they are the foundation for emotion, language, behavior. You know, we know all of this stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and we know that these healthy relationships with trusted adults nurture babies' growing brains and teach them who they are and how the world works. Um, And so when we are thinking about what all this means, this is basically, this is all social emotional development. And so when we're talking about policies related to babies and families, they should all support healthy social emotional development. And so we believe in paid family leave. We are advocating for that. It gives families the time to form those critical relationships without worrying about losing their jobs. You know, we are one of a small handful of states in our countries uh, that, 
is, does not have paid family leave. And we know that developmentally, it is really important for a child to be able to bond with his or her caregivers and, and family members. And it's important for the parents to be able to do that too. They, it's, um, you know, decreases health complications later, depression, maternal depression. It's so critical. It's, it's such a no brainer yet we don't have it. So we advocate for that. Um, we also advocate again for access to high quality childcare where babies and toddlers form these caring relationships with skilled and experienced caregivers. Again, you know, once parents return to work, you know, 62% of mothers return to work within the first year of their baby's life. It's important that they are able to hand off their baby to, to an experienced caregiver and then access to adequate health care, making sure, you know, we, we are definitely supporting, um, making sure that families have access to, to health care at, at this time, um, and also infant toddler, infant and early childhood mental health services, which we know promote positive mental health. They prevent or identify early problems when early intervention can really be most effective. And then if, if needed, identify and treat um, unfortunate disorders that we know exist in babies who have been exposed to trauma, um, to deprivation, and, and things like that. Um, those, those are the biggies for us, you know, federal policies, uh, paid, paid family leave, high quality child care, access to health care, and uh, infant and early childhood mental health services. Excellent. And it sounds like sort of being proactive about all these things is pretty key to, you know, identifying some of these challenges and uh, understanding that that brain development and the fact that relationships, as you said, is the central part of everything. Um, understanding that as parents and as educators is so important. So that's awesome. Um, now, you mentioned some ways that we can advocate for infants and toddlers, including going to the zero to three dot org. Um, also, I understand you have an annual conference, and I think this year it's in San Diego. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that and where our listeners can find out more about your annual conference? Yes, so we are heading to the West Coast in just a few weeks. Uh, and again, you can find out more at our website. We have an annual conference website um, at zero to three, you know, www.zero3.org. And it's really an incredible day of cutting edge research, um, new ideas and innovations, and then time to connect with peers. You know, they are, we are an important part of this economy, of this, um, of a society, you know, folks who really know babies and their families well. And so, it's important, though, to check back in with each other and, and, and connect and, and kind of get that professional development experience. And we also have some really exciting advocacy events planned at this year's conference, uh, including some news about our Think Babies campaign that we are so excited about. Um, last year, we launched this and it was focused uh, in D.C. and uh, we had you know, over 160 families who went and walked the hill with babies in tow and met with their congressional leaders, um, met with congressional staffers and talked about babies. And it was, it was quite a spectacle and we are hoping to do the same and, and even more uh, in this coming year. So we'll be able to share that news uh, at the conference. So it's in San Diego. We would love to see people um, uh, who your listeners there, hopefully some of them are already signed up and planning on going. We are. We're going to be there, so we'll see you there. And yes. Yes. And awesome. I, and as you mentioned, community is so important. So, yeah, like you said, it's very important that we get together and discuss what's happening. Um, Myra, it's been a real pleasure having you on the show. Uh, we've heard some shocking stats. Uh, we've also learned a bit about advocacy and messaging, including some places and resources we can actually go to hone our messaging and terminology so it will have the most impact. Uh, this has been a great session, learning more about Zero to Three and your work there. If listeners want to find out more about Zero to Three and your work, uh, let's just reiterate where they should go. Yes, please go to www.023.org. You can also learn more about our campaign, Think Babies, at www.thinkbabies.org. We really need your support. We are so grateful for all uh, for the early childhood workforce and, and community out there. We, we have made huge strides in the last few decades, and, but we have so much more to go, and we won't get there without all of us working together. 100%. Thanks so much for coming on the show, Myra. Thank you. If you enjoyed our conversation, don't forget to subscribe for more episodes and leave a review. The Preschool Podcast is brought to you by Hi Mama. 
If you're anything like the thousands of teachers listening to the preschool podcast, you know how long it takes to fill out daily sheets, child portfolios, and lesson plans. And that's where Hi Mama saves the day. With an easy to use interface built by teachers for teachers, Hi Mama can cut the time you spend on documentation and parent engagement in half. Create and send beautiful daily sheets, photos, videos, and messages to parents in seconds, saving you time in your busy day. Podcast listeners can get a free tour with one of our community advisors. Go to HiMama.com and click the Start Now.